This is a lesson for the whole world. Open your economy and industries to U.S. technologies and risk having your nation being held to ransom by a present or future U.S. administration. Is America jealous of China? George King. It is now very clear to everyone in the world that USA has no intention to allow any country to surpass her and she will use all tactics, evil or otherwise, to subjugate anyone. In the past, USA executed soft power to expound her reasonableness, projects that she cared about, human rights, freedom of the press, she wanted freedom and democracy for all and also the right of underdeveloped and developing countries to progress. This facade, held since WW2, was all brutally torn apart by Trump who had showed the real and ugly face of USA by his attacks and economic sanctions on allies and others. Underneath this facade, even when she purportedly helped Japan and Germany with the Marshall Plan, created the UN, World Bank, IMF, NATO, WTO ETC, they were in fact instruments and tools of US control, for USA governments and companies. When it became untenable to have gold as a standard to benchmark the value of her currency, she changed the standard and benchmarked the dollar against a commodity such as oil, energy, and thus made the currency international. An agreement was struck between the USA and Saudi Arabia that all oil transactions be denominated in dollars, the so-called petrodollars, and the dollar would then be recirculated in the USA through the purchase of weapons and other investment. This way, the USA can keep printing paper money without any kind of real assets such as gold to back up her dollar. In effect, she can go into deficit, spend without care, as she is in effect bankrolled by the world, but other countries cannot do so the same. This was clearly shown in the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and in Argentina. Many countries tried to break away from this system by the dollarization or to achieve advanced technology but all these countries were toppled by the CIA, direct military intervention or crippled economically such as Chile, Iran, Iraq, Japan etc. When China rose spectacularly, the USA was blindsided because her rise was too fast. In a short 40 years, she lifted more than half of her 1.4 billion people out of poverty without firing a bullet. This is unprecedented in human history. She also advanced in high technology and was able to produce high-speed trains, build huge infrastructures such as roads, railway networks, bridges, electric cars, power plants. She sent men up to space and created internet giants like Alibaba, Tencent, Beidou and Huawei. She is now the second biggest economy in the world, encroaching to overtake USA as the biggest economy. The USA is not jealous. She is frightened and nervous that her hegemony over the world in terms of politics, economic and governments will be toppled and therefore the USA is out to derail and stop China in any way she can. If peaceful means cannot stop China, I will not be surprised that the US will use military methods such as instigating a war of some kind like between Taiwan and China or dragging China into a North Korean war or a direct limited nuclear war. Let's hope that better heads prevail and the USA does not act out of desperation. The resources of the world are bountiful enough to make all of us rich when properly utilized. There is no such thing as a limited nuclear war. It'd take only 10 or 20 nuclear detonations to create a nuclear winter and this planet will be doomed. Remember this is the only known planet that to have intelligent life. As I had lived in both China and USA, I can say that the ordinary Chinese wants to dance, make money, be with their family and have a stable life. In the same way as the ordinary Americans want to watch football, baseball, basketball, drink beer and watch TV. However, the US ruling elite is aggressive in historical terms. The question here is about America, not Americans being jealous. To put this as in perspective, below are some facts for you to ponder in which China is not a victim but a nation moving from undeveloped country of 1970s to now. Also you may want to read the US intelligentsia concept of project for the new century to know the mindset of the US neocon mentality that led to the Iraq war. Even without the USA market, Huawei surpassed Apple in smartphone sales, earning 100 US dollars plus billions last year. Even without the USA car market, China is now leading in electric car manufacturing. In space, even without any help, China put the rover on the far side of the moon and have their own space station. Independently, China has created their own supercomputers and accelerated their renewable energy industries. Many US intellectuals convinced themselves that China cannot innovate, based on the Harvard Business School publication on March 2014, describing parallel control of CCP and the university as or business administration's stifling creativity, similar to the idiotic writing of Francis Fukuyama's End of History.
In fact, the USA cannot compete Tan is technologically in decline although she is ahead now. She wants to stop the rise of China by screaming that China is communist, authoritarian, evil and corrupt and that the USA is promoting democracy, freedom and rule of law. So let's examine the USA's premise. For any country's development, the proof of the pudding is in the eating that is what are the deliverables from China thus far? Uh, rule of law for who? Look at what is happening. A US president who does not dare to show his taxes. A Republican Party which discards the US Constitution that they swore to uphold by not answering Congress. He openly lied to his people, withdrew from a UN Security Council mandated agreement with Iran and then threatened and stopped other countries who wanted to trade with Iran, withdrew from a climate agreement that was signed by 120 nations and TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, signed by 12 nations and stopped the process of WTO by not appointing a judge for arbitration. The USA only adopted the rule of law when it suited her interest and she will use economic sanctions on others to obey her position on the rule of law they like. B. Freedom for whom? In the USA, real freedom is for the top 1%. The middle class and students are sliding into debt that they cannot pay in their lifetime. Even women and doctors there are slowly being criminalized and deprived of freedom of choice over their own bodily health. When other countries, like Germany, who do not want to follow her lawlessness and want to trade with emerging markets like China or Russia, via Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline and against a Huawei ban, or Iran. They threatened with sanctions because USA does not want these freedoms for these countries and companies. What right does the USA have to apply their laws on other countries and companies? If the USA wants to punish, then she should punish her own companies, not the companies and subsidiaries of other countries. C. Democracy for whom? In Iran. The USA toppled a democratic government in 1953 under Mossadegh using CIA and now she wants to provoke a war in order to topple the Islamic government and make the Iranian people suffer. The USA also illegally withheld Venezuela's wealth, such as repatriation of profit from her oil company and stopped Citibank which is holding her funds to pay for insulin for her people. It was rumored that the USA also used cyber hacking to attack her electrical grid. To punish a whole nation just because you don't like an Islamic government or any government is inhuman. If this is not an example of the evil of the USA, what is? All people have a right to choose their own government, rightly or wrongly. No one demanded USA to change their regime when they toppled other governments using CIA. No one demanded the USA people to topple their government when they used gunboat and economic sanctions diplomacy in Venezuela and Iran in this 21st century. Democracy is supposed to lift many out of poverty, give the people a voice for peaceful existence and not to be used as a pretext to fight democracy and freedom wars or create conflicts for your own political and economic interests. The USA is very good at this type of democracy and freedom wars. Not all nations are Christian and they don't follow the Christian ethos which by the way, historically, is an ethos and culture that subjugated people using slavery, physical and cultural genocide of native people divide and conquer tactics, racism and colonization. China, India and Iran have their own thousands of years of ethos and culture and combined with other non-Christian countries consist of more than 70% of the world population. They do not believe the history or culture that the world's inhuman progress revolved around the Bible or her unbelievable stories derived from Greek and Egyptian mythology. These stories caused havoc in Middle East and other lands that had suffered greatly for hundreds of years under these pretexts of colonial wars to civilize the natives. At the present time, we know and have proof that a meritocratic communist country like China can also practice capitalist type of economic system and able to distribute wealth much better than a so-called democratic country like the USA. For example, China lifted 700 to 800 million people out of poverty, more than twice the population of USA in the last 40 years without firing a bullet to enslave or subjugate another nation. This is the essence of socialism which is to benefit the maximum number of ordinary citizens instead of just the 1% rich. It is an epic achievement of historical proportion esp when you know that in 1970s China's GDP was dwarfed by the USA, China's 1 billion US dollars versus the USA's hundreds of billions. Am I saying what China achieved is the be all and end all? Certainly not. China still has a long way to go to give her 1.4 billion people a decent livelihood, compared to USA of 300 plus million people. But she is going to do it in accordance with the historical lessons she inherited and mold the governance to suit herself. Till today, China does not have an universal healthcare system but neither does the USA. Can you imagine that?
being in the same situation as China, but China is targeting to rectify that and USA is trying to deny that to her citizens by getting rid of Obamacare. Why can't the USA lift up her people out of poverty and homelessness and create great infrastructures such as roads, railways, airports, high-speed trains, safe bridges, renewal energy etc with the wealth they had from 1970 still now? Where has all that USA wealth gone to? Why is it that China can do this from such a low GDP in 1970 still now and the USA can't? Where is the US creativity? Why are the American people so docile and brainwashed that they are unable to see this great gap of deliverables by their government? Is anyone calling for a people's revolution in USA? All the above mentioned infrastructures were done in China in the last 40 years and these are the proof of deliverables of China's governance. No amount of fear mongering and disinformation on China can negate this kind of achievement. People are not stupid. They can see for themselves by just visiting China and that's why China wants to open up to showcase their achievement and let others judge their governments and compare. India is envisaged to be next in line to lift her people up from poverty so long as her leadership is united. Hopefully, she will follow the direction of China, without necessarily following China's governance, and focus on the development of her people and not just stock markets or leaders' personal glorification. Also not to open her economy to such an extent for rabid and unruly Western exploitation like that was done to the USSR. We are eagerly watching if she can deliver and cheer her on with the hope that she is strong enough to resist Western USA dictates against her when she wants to trade with Russia and China. In short, we know evil and corruption when see it. Evil is when the USA sanctions and strangles a whole nation and companies just because she lost the competition for technology and governance. Corruption is when you buy influence to those that benefit you only. Authoritarianism is when you put a gun at someone's head to ensure that your economic sanctions are obeyed and when you blatantly rip off international agreements and want to change them to your benefit like the WTO and force others to follow your rule of law. No one respects that kind of rule of law. The USA and the West always complain that China enforced technology transfer. This is not really correct. Remember that when China joined the WTO in 2000, she was classified as a developing nation even till now. Under that category and playing by the rules of WTO, China can protect certain industries so that these industries can grow in her country. The US said that Huawei Telecom Equipment has back doors to spy for China but they could not show any proof. They are said to have stolen intellectual properties. However, we know for a fact that the USA spied on everyone including Germany's Angela Merkel, revealed by Edward Snowden using Cisco equipment, Facebook, Google and Apple. Perhaps the USA wants to ban Huawei because they cannot spy through Huawei's products. On intellectual properties, Apple sued Samsung, Samsung sued Apple. It is normal in the tech world, so for Huawei to be embroiled in these are not uncommon. By accident or by luck, China protected her internet-based industries and disallowed Google and other internet-based companies to enter their spheres. If she had opened to Google, China will not have Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, Huawei ETC and all the present subsequent emerging industries SPI and 5G. Also, had she opened up to Google, she would thus have invited in a Trojan horse. Now, with Google banning her from using their OS, the Chinese internet industries would have been severely crippled. This is a lesson for the whole world. Open your economy and industries to the USA technologies and risk having your nation being ransomed by a present or future USA administration who is mad for personal racial and seemingly fascist type of power and has no respect for international law. When you disagree with her policies or governments like buying gas or products from Russia or China or any country which USA wants to strangle like Iran and especially when the payment transaction are not in US dollars, the USA Trump at present is using the rule that if you lie loud, strong and long enough, you can get the US and other media to amplify your concern and the whole world will believe you. Huawei and China showed their performance through facts and they followed the rule of law set up by the West to show their achievements. They did their hard work and spent money for the past 30 to 40 years on research on technology and development. China deserves to succeed.